Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Most Protestant Christians are well aware of this scripture, and it's a great one. As Christians, we are saved by grace. It is a gift of God. Uh, the Bible records that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, so there's nothing that we can do to earn salvation. What I see in addressing the issue of prayer is that God has a lot of charity toward us in prayer. And in particular, I see two rather simple faults that may need to be addressed, and that is we are being presumptuous in our prayers or we are being unconfident in our prayers, either of which will leave us falling short of where God wants us to be in prayer success with him. So the simple thing to say is that no one ever earns an answer to prayer. Some would like you to think you do. I heard one prosperity teacher saying that when you put into that offering, now you have a receipt with God. And so when you need something, you go to him and you give him that receipt. Like he owes you something. God does not owe us anything. And we have nothing that we can give him that will turn his head. Because everything is from him anyway. God loves us. He just wants a relationship with us. If he would regard sins, who could stand? Anyway, so the thing is we cannot bribe God with he, what he has already created and given to us. We can see that in places like 1 Corinthians 4, 7. All that we have has been given of him. God has promised to supply our needs. As I've been fond of saying, not our, he will supply our need, but not our greed. From Philippians 4.19, he is a generous God, but sometimes our needs are supplied in a rather uh, smaller way, sufficient but not overwhelming. He knows what we can handle. He's not going to give us something that might spoil us. In spite of these things, God is still saying that we should pray for help and we should run to him. He urges us in, in Hebrews 4, I have it outlined to be verses 14 through 16. He says that we should come boldly to the throne of grace for our help in time of need. He wants us to do that. But some of us feel unworthy. And that too is rather a problem. We are not worthy in ourselves, are we? Because we are sinners. And this is why Jesus died, so that we would be born again. He, he paid the wrath of God in our place on the cross. Praise be to his name. We are not the only ones. If you feel unworthy to receive from the Lord, you're not the only ones. We find this all throughout. In the Old Testament, we're seeing it in places like uh, Psalm 40. David is writing, you know, that his, his iniquities, his iniquities are, his sins are up over his head. He is just so overwhelmed by them, even though the Lord said that in his life, David did not turn aside from what, from what he wanted. That is from what the Lord himself wanted, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. We also see in places like 1 Kings 17, the widow that Elijah was sent to when her son died unexpectedly. She said, have you come to call my sins into remembrance? See, we have this sense. Jeremiah said it also. Uh, in Lamentations, when he was in the dungeons, he says, shall a man complain for the punishment of his sins? And yet he hadn't sinned, you know, to be punished, you know, specifically in this way. And so others have felt this way also. But we need to remember that we are justified in Jesus Christ. He is the justifier. He is our righteousness. We don't have to depend on ourselves. Oh, Lord, I, I haven't been good enough lately. How can I come to you? Well, you come to him even when you can't be good. You say, oh God, please forgive my sins. Please come and fill my heart and, and change me. No one ever earns an answer to prayer, but he has told us to cast all of our care upon him. But sometimes, as I'm saying here, some get presumptuous, like they've been really good. They've been really, you know, living for the Lord, you know, making inroads here and there. And so God owes them something because of, you know, their lives one way or the other. Then there is the other part that says, oh, I am too unworthy. God will never answer my prayers. Neither of these is true. God will hear you, but he might have to refine you a little bit along the way. 
Again, we see this from 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all our care upon him because he cares for us. Years ago, when we were in a financial strait, we were trying to rely on God for our needs. And at this time, our air conditioning, which was part of a central air conditioning system, was not working. And we were headed towards summer when I had typically relied on air conditioning a good bit. Frankly, I'm a little ashamed of it now. I've definitely grown, you know, since this time. But at the time, I mean, it was weeks we were praying, Oh, Lord, please heal our air conditioning. Please heal our air conditioning. We need this. You're going to, you're going to provide, right? You're, whatever it is. And uh, it came down to, after a couple of weeks, I was praying one morning, and I was really complaining to God. I was saying, Father, how can we, how can we trust you to provide all our needs when... The air conditioning you won't fix. Talk about presumptuous, huh? That was that was I'm very ashamed of the way that I was behaving, but I was honest with God and I told him this. And he rebuked me. I'll try not to cry because it would be difficult to speak. He rebuked me and, and just more or less let me know that I was acting like a presumptuous child. He didn't owe it to me. It was a privilege I had to call on him because of the grace he had shown me in my life. And so I repented for my sins and uh, for doing this. And uh, I told my wife about it. And a while later, I was out. I was walking out someplace to have some more time in prayer. And when I was just arriving in the general area, I felt led to pray in the spirit for a little bit. So I sat down on a curb, prayed in the spirit. It was really, really short. And I say, you know, maybe 20 seconds or so. But I prayed it because I didn't know what I was praying about, you know, honestly. And uh, so I got up and I kept walking. And maybe another 30 seconds or so, uh, my wife calls me. The air conditioning came on. The Lord healed the air conditioning. So I didn't do so well with not crying. But here's the thing. God is merciful. I was being a presumptuous child, and I had a lot to learn. But in that instance, the Lord was saying, okay, he's trying, he doesn't understand, he knows. All these years since then, it has always stayed with me to be thankful for what we had, to what we have. Because even at that time, we had ceiling fans, we had other things. To be thankful for what you have and to be not to be presumptuous. I was being presumptuous. Now, as it happens, you know, sometimes I feel very unworthy, but I see that I am justified through the grace of God. So please have confidence as you go before the Lord and seek him in prayer. He has great charity toward us and he wants you to come. It is his honor to hear and answer your prayers. It glorifies him. Take care.